Okay, so how well do you actually understand powers and exponents? Well, if you have a pretty good understanding of powers and exponents in mathematics, this will be a very easy question to answer without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's go to take a look at the problem. We have 1 over 2 to the negative 2 power, and this is a multiple choice question, so the correct answer is one of these right here. So which one is it? All right, so uh, A is 4, B is negative 4, C is 1 fourth, and D is negative 1 fourth. All right, so hopefully you know which one is correct. Put that into the uh, comment section if you have the right answer, but even if you're not sure, just go ahead and take a guess anyways. Put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through step-by-step step how to uh, answer this question. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here, again, is the problem. We're not going to use a calculator. And uh, again, you have a, a pretty good chance of guessing correctly. So don't leave, <laughs> you know, uh, here's a little tip for those of you that still have to take math exams. Unless you um, are going to be penalized for the wrong answer, you should always guess. So maybe you're like, you know what, I want to guess uh, D. Well, if that's your answer, unfortunately, that is not correct because the correct answer is A. But I congratulate you on at least guessing. All right. So if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence because you certainly seem to understand the rule for negative exponents in mathematics, right? So we have a power right here and it has a negative exponent. So we need to know what to do here. This is not that difficult, but uh, this tends to confuse a lot of people. But uh, stick with me for a couple minutes. You'll be looking like this person in just one second. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at our take a look at our problem, excuse me. So let's suppose you're looking at this problem on a test. Again, you're like, hmm, you know, what, what am I gonna do here? So you could see that my choices here, you know, can easily draw somebody in who's not quite sure on what to do. Because maybe this right here is like, I don't know, is this like two times negative two? Maybe this is like a negative four. So one over negative four, like maybe this negative one fourth looks pretty good, right? So, I mean, it looks good. Unfortunately, it is incorrect, right? So this is uh, where we don't want to be guessing on math exams. And another thing too, uh, typically, uh, and this of course happens to everyone who's taken exams where you rush through and you're like, yes, I see my answer. And you're taking these guesses and you see what you believe is the correct answer and you fly through these exams, you circle your answer and then you uh, find out that, you know, you didn't really, you know, barely maybe pass the exam. So be very careful when it comes to uh, multiple choice questions. You'll often see um, answer choices that are kind of designed to uh, represent common mistakes or common ways or common misunderstandings about the problem. So the only choice... Uh, to figure this thing out is to actually know the rule for a negative exponent in mathematics. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that rule right now, and then, of course, we'll answer the question. All right, so here is the situation that we really have. All right, so we have 1 over a power with a negative exponent. So in math, when you have something like 2 to the third power, this thing up here is called the exponent, this little uh, number in the top right. And this big number down here is what we call the base. The entire thing is a power, all right? Now, 2 to the third power means take 2 and multiply it by itself two times. So that's 2 times 2 times 2. So there's three 2s here. So instead of, you know, representing this situation like this, okay, you know, this is like a lot of 2s. If we want to figure this out mathematically or write this, this is what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 2s. That's like too much writing. So we're just going to go 2 to the seventh power. All right, so hopefully you have an understanding of powers and exponents, but we have this negative exponent, all right? So 3, this number is telling us how many times to multiply 2 by. So this negative 2, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, that could be very confusing. And uh, again, 
this uh, is only one of additional, one of about, I think about five rules that you'll need to know about powers and exponents. And typically you learn this stuff like in a pre-algebra type of course. All right, so let me go ahead and show you this rule. And uh, here it is. All right, so we have a to the negative n is equal to one over a uh, to the n. Now this seems intimidating because, well, it may seem intimidating for some people out there because it's an algebraic kind of formula or property. And uh, a lot of people get, you know, they're like, this is why I don't like math, because it's so confusing. Just tell me how to do the problem. Well, we need to be able to interpret an algebraic property. All right, so let's just uh, slow it down, and I'll show you a couple examples here. So what, we, what this is saying is that we have some power, okay? Now, the base to this power here is A. This is the base. It's A. And the exponent is negative n. All right, so this is the rule for negative exponents. So a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. Now, positive n. So notice it's going from negative to positive. So this is the rule. Now, typically, this is what you're going to get in some sort of like algebra course or math course. They'll give you this rule. And uh, if you have a good math teacher, they'll give you several examples of how this particular uh, rule works. Now, uh, let me go ahead and actually kind of um, make sure you understand this simple rule, and then we'll get into this particular problem because it's uh, a little bit more involved than, than, than this kind of basic scenario. All right, so a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So let's just follow the pattern. So 3 to the negative 2 power is equal to, so here I have a negative exponent, the base is a. So basically, I'm just, go I'm just going to take this entire thing right here, and I'm gonna uh, let me use a different color here. Uh, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it over or under one. Okay, so I'm taking this whole thing. I'm gonna put it under this one right here, and I'm gonna go from negative to positive. So here, three to the negative two is equal to one over three to a positive two. All right. Now, if you understand this, then uh, you're going to be well on your way to understanding the solution to this problem. All right. Let's take a look at another example. So x to the negative fifth power. Again, we have a negative exponent. So we can write this as uh, 1 over the same thing, but we're going to uh, go from negative to positive. So this is going to this is going to be 1 over x to the fifth. Okay, so hopefully you understand this. And if you do, well, I'm going to give you another way to actually understand this uh, formula. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, this is good. This is uh, going to be typically what you're going to see in most uh, math textbooks, like algebra textbooks. But I'm going to give you another way to think of the formula right now. Okay, so let's go back to our 3 to the negative 2 power situation. Now, we know that 3 to the negative 2, because we're following that rule, is equal to 1 over 3 to a positive 2. Okay, so we just figured this out. This was the formula a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. No big deal. Okay, but I want us to kind of think of this situation differently. So we have a power to a negative exponent, and this is what it's equal to. But I want to think of this as a fraction. Okay, and you'll see why here in a second. So instead of 3 to the negative, negative 2, anytime you want to think of a value, like let's say the number 5 as a fraction, just put it over 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5. But now here we have a numerator and we have a denominator. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this problem, and I just want you to mentally think of it like this. Okay, so it's still 3 to the negative 2, but I want to put this over 1. Okay, so 3 to the negative 2 over 1 is the same thing as 3 to the negative 2. And, of course, our answer is the same. But I want to uh, kind of uh, interpret this rule differently. Okay, so here is, the I think, what is the best way to... Uh, deal with uh, negative exponents in mathematics. So what you want to do or what you want to think about is the following. Anytime you have a power, all right, on one side of the fraction bar, so it's going to be either in the numerator or denominator, if you want to change the sign, up right, right here we have a negative exponent. If you want to change the sign, and what I'm talking about the sign is uh, whether this exponent number is positive or negative, I can easily uh, do that by just picking it up and putting it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? Very, very easy rule to remember. So if I have three to the negative two, I'm like, yeah, hey, I'll just put this down. It's in, currently in the numerator. I could just pick it up, put it down in the denominator, and I'm gonna make this uh, go from negative to positive, 
okay? But the same rule uh, works in reverse. In other words, let me kind of erase this right here. I can have three squared, all right? This is the great thing about thinking about the rule this way. So if I have three squared, I can turn this into a, a three to the negative two by putting it down here in the opposite side of the fraction bar. Okay, so you can go from positive, negative, negative to positive, okay? So if you can remember the rule that way, then it's gonna make your life much, much easier when you're dealing with uh, positive and negative exponents. A lot of students get confused with, the, uh, with this rule. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this example right here. All right, so if I have one over three to the negative two, now this is very much like our problem. I'm gonna take this and now I don't really understand what to do with three uh, to the negative two, but I do understand three squared. That means three times three. So I'm gonna get rid of this negative by putting this up in the numerator. It's currently in the denominator. So this is gonna go from three to the negative two to three squared over one. Okay, so remember, I'm just putting this upstairs. It's going downstairs to upstairs. I'm just changing the sign. So it's gonna go from negative to positive. And again, it goes, you can go from positive to negative or negative to positive, doesn't make a difference. All right, so now we have three squared over one. Of course, three squared is three times three or nine. Okay, so this is a very important rule. Let me give you one more quick example, and then obviously we'll finish up by doing the actual problem here. So what do you think this uh, answer will be? So if I have x to the negative fifth over y to the negative two. Now let's suppose you were taking a little um, algebra quiz and your teacher said, write this with only positive exponents. And that's pretty typical with uh, most uh, math problems. We don't like to leave our answers with negative exponents. So how can we change this problem such that uh, uh, the exponents here are positive? Well, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube two math man, how about we move this upstairs and then we take this and we move this downstairs? And I'm like, you know what you're thinking, right? Or you're paying attention to my video. Either way, that is correct. Because if we move this downstairs, it's gonna go from negative to positive. So let's gonna do that right now. So this is gonna be X to a positive five. And if I move this upstairs, i.e. the numerator, I mean, I know I'm not really mathematically, technically correct with my descriptions upstairs and downstairs, but uh, you know what, I'm trying not to be, uh, you know, uh, too math techie here. So we're gonna go from Y to the negative two up, uh, and this is gonna turn into a Y to a positive two. And that is it. So again, if you can think of this rule or this uh, property or formula of negative exponents in this manner, it's gonna make our lives or your life and my life so much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and finally answer the question. But before we do that, I need you to do this real quick and support this channel. Okay, now why would you wanna support this channel? Well, you know what, if you're getting some sort of value out of this, or if you've been frustrated with like not understanding uh, and understanding something in math, you know, hopefully you're getting something out of this content, or maybe you've been watching my other videos. If that's the case, thank you so much. Matter of fact, I actually have to write this out. Thank you, okay? I put a lot of content and effort, or put a lot of work into my content, and I post a lot of content, but I do it because it, it's really, you know, I'm passionate about helping people learn math. But uh, when you do subscribe, okay, it really does uh, help uh, YouTube kind of push out my content to other people that could benefit from my material, from my videos, okay? And as a math teacher, you know, I wanna grow my virtual classroom as big as possible. So that's why I stop my uh, videos here and I do, you know, need your support and I'm not afraid to ask for it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move on. By the way, if you need additional help with um, powers and exponents or, or, or math or anything beyond this video, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. For the things that we're talking about in this particular uh, level of math, check out either my pre-algebra or my math skills rebuilder course. All right, so let's go ahead and finally finish this up because this is not gonna be that difficult. So we have one over two to the negative two. So we don't wanna deal with negative exponents. We wanna turn these things into positive exponents. So this two to the negative two, I'll just put this upstairs and put the, up in the numerator. Remember, this is gonna be over one, okay? So this is gonna be two squared. It's gonna go from negative to positive. So I have two squared over one, which is the same thing as two squared by itself, okay? Or two times two, of course, is four. All right, so again, uh, powers and exponents are tremendously important in mathematics. 
And uh, real quick, I'll just uh, write out some th other rules that you'll need to know. I'm not going to get into this too much, but uh, here is the property or, or uh, property of powers and exponents for multiplying two powers with the same base. So that's a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. Uh, now, if you are dividing powers, that's a to the m over a to the n. And what we want to do is subtract the exponents. That's uh, m to m minus n, excuse me. Now, if you have a power and you're taking it to another exponent, that's a to the m n. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. And of course, we just dealt with this a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. Now, some of you might be saying, boy, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, how do you keep all this stuff in your brain? Well, you know, maybe it's because I've been doing this decades and decades and decades. Please don't be impressed with my rote <laughs> memory. Uh, what you need to do is to understand these um, uh, properties and formulas that you learn in math. And the only way you're going to really get good at this stuff is to uh, practice. And, you know, watching one problem like this and understanding it, that's a good start. But uh, in order for you to really gain the full comprehension of working with anything in mathematics, as a matter of fact, or anything uh, even beyond math, you've got to practice. You need to immerse yourself, and it does take time. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.